What the heck are you talking about? Why would you ever write a test like that? I would argue that the right way to use enums are for values that aren't changing. And I've mentioned before on my channel that if you have enum checks and comparisons scattered across your code base, that as soon as you go to update that enum, it's going to mean that the, all of those checks that you have probably have to get some attention. But I get it. I've seen many code bases where people are using enums that are having changing values over time. It's really difficult to use an enum only for a set of values that aren't ever changing. It really limits the usage for it. So in a previous video, which I'll link right up here and you can check that out, I talked about different ways that you could go move away from using enums. It's just one possibility that you could try out. In this video, I'm gonna talk about an alternative to that. So if you're using enums and the values might be changing, how do you make sure that people are aware that that's going to have potentially a very big impact? Well, it's a little bit unconventional, but before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my newsletter. Let's go look at some code. All right, on my screen, I have just a very simple enum called dev leader enum. I wasn't feeling very creative for names, and we have three values that are inside of here, dev, leader, and then value three. So if we were building a system and using this enum, and this was supposed to be a set of values that are never intended to change for the lifetime of the application that we would be writing, then I might say, sure, go use the enum. And that's been the advice that I've been trying to promote on my channel. However, I do understand that there are situations where you can't plan for everything. That might even be your intention that you don't want this to ever change. But guess what? At some point down the line, maybe it's two, three years later, you have value four that needs to be added to this enum. What's supposed to happen? Even though you went in with best intentions to never have this change, oh no, you're remembering what Nick said, we can't possibly change the enum, everything's gonna break. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you see what I mean. This is supposed to be something that's not supposed to change. And this is on a spectrum, right? So I keep saying not supposed to change, don't do it if it's going to change, but the reality is you can do whatever you want. I'm just trying to indicate that there's going to be some maintenance cost to having that kind of thing scattered across your code and having to make an update like this. You could have an enum that's changing very frequently, and if it's only checked in one spot, there's gonna be very little maintenance. So all of the information I'm trying to convey to you is based on historical code bases that I've seen where all of these enum checks are in many different spots and the enum that's being used isn't something that's going to be constant throughout the development time of that application. So we've previously seen a way that we can try to move away from enum usage, but instead of doing that, if you want to use an enum, because I think they're an awesome tool, you get a string and an integer kind of combine into one thing it's really nice for expressing the intention of code. I get it, they're a handy thing to use. If you wanna make sure that you're protected, something that you could do that seems a little bit weird is writing tests for it. And I'm gonna pause here because I know that some people are going to see the next part that I'm about to show you and go, what the heck are you talking about? Why would you ever write a test like that? And I'm gonna explain why. A lot of people talk about writing tests strictly from the perspective of, we don't wanna know about the implementation. If you write a test that knows about the implementation, it's gonna break. That means we can't refactor code, the test is useless. But I call bull crap on that. I think that that's an awesome way to write tests and I encourage you to do it. But I don't think that that's the only usage for tests. In fact, I think tests as a general statement are just tools that give us confidence. That's it. But what kind of confidence are you looking for? A lot of the time people are framing this as, I wanna make sure I can have confidence in my refactoring. I wanna make sure I can make changes to something and the behavior of it from the outside's not gonna break. I get it, that's a really common use case. It's just not the only use case that you can write tests for. So what I'm about to show you is a little bit weird. It means that when you change the code, your test is gonna break. But that's exactly what we want in this case because we don't want people to change the enum. Let's go have a look. All right, so I'm back in the code here and I'm gonna start expanding this test class that I have on the screen. And we're gonna start with a test that checks if the enum names should not change. And this was really cool because I typed this name out like this and Copilot actually completed the rest of it. So I'd love to take credit for this test, but it's not even me. So the point of this test, it looks pretty obvious and it looks like it's really copying and pasting code. It looks really brittle if you're understanding what this test is doing, but we're going to take the three names for the enum values that we have, and then we're gonna call enum get names on the enum that we have, which is going to give us back an array of strings. So this array of strings should in theory match up with these three names. So of course, this is a string representation in an array of these three things right here. 
it's a pretty obvious test. It feels kind of silly, but I do think that if you have something like this in place and you want to make sure that the names of your enum never change and the order of your enum is not changed, then this is a test that can really help with that. Now, you might say, well, Nick, people can go change the enum and the test at the same time. What's preventing that? And there's literally nothing preventing that, but you could make the same argument about any test and any code change that people can go change both at the same time. The point is it's one more opportunity where if someone was not aware that they should not be changing it, then they're going to get caught here because whatever your continuous integration system is, and I should have prefaced all of this, hopefully you have something like that that's running your tests for you before you go to push to production at some point that this integration system would run this test and go, Oh wait, these enum names are not the same or they're out of order. So if we were to go run this test, of course we would have it match because this is the same three names that we have up here. Now, if I take this one and I change it to value four, automatically, if I wasn't aware that that's going to break or have repercussions in the code, and you might say, well, Nick, you can just refactor and rename across the code base. You're totally right. But in one of the earlier videos I made, I talked about serialization. If you wanted to serialize by name, then you're not going to have a good time with a change like this. And that might mean that you want to change the name of this test method to indicate that. Or maybe you want to leave a comment. I know people are up in arms about comments when they're useful when they're not. But again, if you're trying to put a test like this in place to have preventative measures, I think you could totally add a comment for context. This is why we have this test. This is what it's supposed to be protecting from. So again, it seems like a very brittle test because it is, but that's the point. So if we want to have some protection against renaming, reordering, this kind of test, really simple, can give you some of that confidence. It's one more stop in a pull request or a code review where someone can say, it looks like you changed both of these spots and it's one more opportunity for the reviewer or the person that made the code to say, hmm, I changed the test that says enum names should not change and I literally changed the name. Maybe I should ask about this, right? It's not a perfect solution. I don't think there's perfect solutions to anything, but I think this is one more tool that you can leverage. Now I wanna move on to another variation of this though, and we're gonna look at enum values should not change. So again, if we wanted to go back to the idea, I'm going to scroll up a little bit, but first have a look. It just says 0, 1, and 2 for the array. If we scroll back up here, dev is 0, leader is 1, and value 3 is 2. That's a little bit confusing, but 0, 1, 2. Now, if we want to make sure that these don't change, that would mean that if we were to add something else into here, so if I were to put value 4, right, that means that we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to have an array with four items in it up to index 3. And that means that if we go back down here, this test would end up failing. So we will get some protection against adding items or removing items, which is great. Now, if we don't care about renaming, so let's go back to the example of serialization. If your enum was always serializing based on the numeric type and you didn't care about the string value of it, you might say, I don't need the other test we already looked at. I just want to make sure that we have this kind of coverage. But I have a question for you. I'm going to go back to this test and I'm going to ask you, is this test sufficient coverage for making sure that the enum values don't change? Let's go have another look at it. So to repeat the question, does this test truly prevent enum values from not changing? Right? We have an array of 0, 1, 2. If I scroll back up, we know that the point of this test is to make sure, based on the assertion, that we have the values 0, 1, 2. And hopefully you've had a minute to think about this, but what happens if I do something like this, right? We still have the values 0, 1, 2 coming back. However, I've just reordered this enum. And if that's going to make a big difference in your code, maybe it doesn't in the code, but maybe it does for your serialization because now value 3 is mapping to leader and leader is mapping to value 3. That could cause some serious damage when you're trying to save and load data with some older sets of data and your new code. Arguably, this has very little impact within your code because all of the checks are going to be using the enum anyway. However, serialization or other scenarios could be very impacted by this. And that's something that's not covered by this test here. This is really just looking for 0, 1, 2. So what this means is that to get a little bit more verbose and the test is going to start to look pretty silly, 
we can do something like check that everything that we have in the enum maps to the expected values. Let's have a look at that. All right, so here is an example of a test that seems pretty verbose, but would give us that protection that we're looking for. And again, I know and I understand you're reading this saying you're literally mapping the entire enum. This is way too cumbersome, way too bloated. And I get it. But the point is that if you're trying to protect against that enum changing, you can put things in code just like this to help. So what this test will do is create a dictionary mapping the enum name to the value that it's supposed to have. So that's the expected set of data. And then we're going to map the enum to the dictionary that is the actual representation currently. And then we can just check to see if they're equal. So you can see that when I run this test, I get this green check mark. So I'm just right clicking and running tests. I get that nice green check mark there. And if you want to see what happens if I rename or do anything else in here, what I can do is go put this back and mess it all up. So we've done a rename here. So if we go run this test once more, I'll scroll back down, run the test, boom, we get a red light. So I want you to think about this as a tool that you can leverage. You have the opportunity to introduce something like this. If you're worried about people making changes and having big sweeping impacts across your code base, do I recommend doing this all of the time? No, I think there's situations where it's very valuable. And one thing that comes to mind for me is if you want to have other people have the opportunity to work in your code base, you want to make sure that your code's protected and they're protected from making mistakes. One of the ways that you can help let people feel more comfortable in your code base is if you have tests that do things just like this. You're protecting them from making mistakes that they wouldn't know about otherwise. What's to stop anyone from making an enum change and if the code compiles and if they're running some scenarios that they're doing manually, right? If those all pass, they might go, great, this is good to go someone doing a code review, what's the likelihood they're going to catch every possible situation that they need to be looking for this? It's going to be pretty low, likely. So having a test like this can be helpful. It's just not a silver bullet. Now, I also wanted to mention that I don't have experience yet with Roslyn analyzers. I do think that this might be something that could be pretty cool with an analyzer. You might be able to create a custom rule for it and say that if I have this enum declared, you probably have to write something silly like one of these tests, like the same type of logic to do the comparison, but it could do an analysis on the enum well before you're trying to run it or run your tests in your integration pipeline and be able to tell you with some syntax highlighting right on the spot, hey, you shouldn't change this. I think that could be pretty awesome. But again, is it necessary all of the time? Absolutely not. It's just one more tool that you can use if you find a good opportunity for it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you find some scenarios like this where it might seem useful and I'll see you next time.